Welcome back. Um, we're going to play some more Shenzhen I.O. here. I completely forget where we left off. Uh, yeah, we ended up making some kind of cool laser tag. Um, and we optimized our design further and further. Uh, I'm actually pretty impressed by this here. You can see the performance of this particular design and then of new design one copy and then of new design one copy copy. You can see the metrics of every individual design. So it's not just keeping you track of your high score, but allowing you to see how every one of the various designs performs. Unfortunately, there's no way to like unfold and fold this to see a comparative of every one of your scores, but here you do see the high score displayed. So I did pretty good there. Oh, I also finally got to use some of our... Yeah, well, let me show this off again. Just for those who missed it. Um, first of all, I figured out you could full screen so you could get the entire circuit captured. Uh, second of all, you see some of these guys over here. Cool stuff, eh? Yeah, we figured out how to make a feedback loop in lieu of having a capacitor that could serve as a buffering agent. We are just um, having chips that feed into a series of chips and allowing the propagation delay between the chips um, to have some capacitance that remembers the old value. And we don't have a feedback loop that's destructive here, so this is, works just beautifully. Basically, what this does is uh, what this does is achieve. Um, it keeps some sort of stateful information on the respawn plus alive, ORed together, uh, which gets negated once you get hit. Uh, just trust me, it works. And then the other half of the circuit. Pretty simple, although it took quite a few iterations to get to this point. Uh, we figured out how to do cool stuff. Um, we deliberately skipped over prototyping new ideas, uh, which just said put, take a whole bunch of parts, uh, put them together and make a game. So we skipped that. So here we are on our next uh, mission. Color changing vape pen. Create a working design. All right. Hope y'all are sitting down right now, because this one's going to be big. How big, you ask? Well, you just might want to be talking to the guy who negotiated a deal to make all of the light-up color-changing vapes that Cool Dad is going to give away on his next year's global tour. Dang, am I right? This is going to be a huge deal for us. Literally millions of these are going to be given away. Looks rather straightforward. We get color values in uh, when we color some LEDs to get the shade we want. I put a bunch of extra LEDs in the prototyping bin too, since those should be fun to play with. Little tip for you, see the little triangle at the beginning of the Xbus data packet? That's when all of those values in that packet are coming in. It's not like one per time unit. Yeah? Shame that Cool Dad's actual music, if I can even call it that, Sounds like 2008 era dubstep crossed with a parliamentary debate. If parliament were populated entirely by screaming the cause. I have no idea why he's that famous. My girlfriend Xiaomi is a fan. Some of it is quite danceable. Well, you heard it. We're going to make millions of these devices. Here we go. Alright, Radio RX is a non-blocking XBUS input connected to a radio receiver. Green, red, green, and blue are simple outputs connected to an ultra-bright RGB tricolor LED from top to bottom. When a data pack is received over the radio, pulse the LED as specified red, green, blue pulse. If the data pack is received while a pulse is in progress, interrupt that pulse. Your interest as far as electronics is resonant frequencies of biological life forms. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So, 
Uh, again, I'm playing this game in a pretty low resolution, so I don't exactly get to see the entire chip all at once here. Um, but we don't have any um, pins going out on the board. All we have the, is the radio uh, receiver RX and transmitter TX. So if I were to like directly attach this, yeah, this needs signals. This needs simple um, signals. Uh, oh, I forgot to check my audio balance. Before we get too far, let me actually check that I am audible and the game is audible. Um, okay, that doesn't look too bad. I think I did step things up a bit from last time. Or I was having great difficulty hearing the music at all on the recording. I think I have um, stepped things up considerably. So, here you receive a packet, and wait. When packets received over the radio, pulse is specified. Oh, I see, I see. This is a simple red, green, blue, I assume. I mean, what else could it be? Alright, so if we just like. Oops. Um, just kidding. If we, uh did pulse out here wait okay that is a mismatch I thought so I don't have any parts that um, have oh wait yeah I do but I can't use the DX 300 it says not recommended but this would give me um, the simple data that I'm looking for. But it says not recommended, and I don't know why. I mean, this would seem to make some sense. Oh no, we need multiple levels of intensity. Okay, so that's not sufficient. Um, well, all we can do now is, like, take a couple of these. Um, so that's a P1, this is a P1, this is a P0, so I could do something like that. Signal generator to amplifier to, uh, yeah, an antenna or plasma tube. Um, so let me see. Now there's no restriction on like how we uh, receive this input, namely it could send the data over the data bus to both chips simultaneously. Whether or not that's a good idea is up for debate, but all these values are received all at once was the clue. Um, so we're supposed to read a value, read a value, read a value. Um, Hmm. What can I do now? How do I indicate in programming terms that I've read the first x values and that... These are like intensities, right? Okay, I've got another idea. Um, I have another idea. So this is going to be as expensive as all get out, but um, I think it should work. Oh, it's not on the board. That's less than ideal. Okay. Oh. Um. Well, so much for me trying to make this beautiful. Functionality's got to come first, unfortunately, so... Uh, I'll have to do it more like that. And so, I'm not even sure what my big... Oh, I can't go through this hole here, either. Okay, so this is strongly discouraging against um, having that many 
chips here. I'm just trying to figure out how could I even start to lay this out in a way that I have enough um, components on board to make this work. Um, let's see. That's not on the board either. So the game is really pushing you to try to do this kind of layout. Or one of these on top of the other. Hmm. Now I've got three registers. An accumulator, a data register, and another accumulator. Um, and what I'm supposed to do is retain four values. I don't think that's going to work. Um, I think the other thing the game might be pushing you to do is something like this. Still, uh, well, we could try it and find out how far we get. Um, <laughs> oh, we have bridges. Bridges could make things possible that otherwise seem not doable. Um, let's see, how far up and down can I move these things? Not very far. How am I going to lay this out? I mean, I think I could... Oh, I can't actually move that. That's a fixed part. So say if I could... I was going to say if I could move this part, um, that might make this puzzle easier somehow, but I seem not to be able to move it. Furthermore, I can not draw a solid connection there. I have only room for this solid connection. Um, so how do I wire this? And yeah, there's no room to make a connection on top or below there. So we have to do red, green, blue. At least I assume these are red, green, and blue. I don't actually know. We should find out. Um, so what happens if I do something dumb? Like, I connect this to all the ports. Okay, we can't do that. That's too dumb. Apparently, game just forbids that outright. Um, let's say we sleep one, move a hundred... Oh, I'm sorry, move... Yeah, 100 over to P1. Okay, so yeah, I did read this correctly. This is a red output. Um, so that's what that does. So yeah, we're going to need red, green, and blue. How do we do this? Okay, that gives us green and blue. So physically, it is possible to wire this. Um, is this what I want to do? Or do I have a better idea? Is there a better way for me to wire this? Yeah, this is a beautiful game. It's brilliant. I like everything about it, really. Other than the fact that I'm playing it in the small resolution, but the parts, all the text on the parts looks quite readable in this resolution, and I think that's kind of important for viewership. Um, so, what do we do? Oh wait, wait, um, is there... I'm surprised though that like all these parts are not recommended. Something like this signal or symbol table could be quite useful, honestly. Because I only have four registers. And one of these four registers is going to have to be counting down how often to send uh, data. 
so I'm guessing we're gonna receive values over the X bus. Um, so move X1 to X3. In fact, we don't even have to receive it. We could just move it out on over the bus. That's how we're gonna. Okay. Sorry, what it tripped me up earlier was trying to connect this input to both chips in parallel and then trying to figure out how to divide up the signals. Well, this is how you do it. You don't do this in parallel, you do it in series. So, what we can do is say move... Um, Alright, X1 into accumulator... X2 into the data register. Now, I still don't have here anything capable of counting. Um, oops, X2 is not connected. Um, I guess technically we should be sleeping on X1 until inputs are available. Um, unless... maybe the second sleep command is not required. Um, and then sleep X on X1 again. And... Um, let's see... How do we do this? The end product is supposed to be something that uh, follows the specification here. Namely that when we receive a packet, flash the red, green, and blue lights on the output uh, for the specified pulse duration. Um, this is just a simple red, green, blue output. You have to keep track of the pulse yourself. So, we're going to have a label at the start saying uh, wait or sleep until input's available. Um, this here is going to test um, going to test what's our value over the X1 pin. Um, whoops. Uh, rather, it's going to test, is our X1 signal a zero? And in the case where it is, jump back to start. Um, fact, can I just format this a little cleaner here? Um, oh, wait a second. Never mind. Um, so all I need to handle here is the negative case, um, where we need to put on our output pins, um, we're gonna sleep again here, move, uh, our accumulator to P1, Oh, never mind. Yeah, I see what I'm doing now. I'm being silly. The stuff about moving things into accumulators is completely unnecessary. Because, um, signal type ports like P1 and P2 here, um, automatically turn on and off. Or rather, you don't have to constantly be emitting a value out of the P1 or P2 port. That intensity... Um, you don't have to remember the old intensity value and keep repeating it. You just have to send it once. And it sends continuously. Um, no, this game really doesn't help with that. This game is more of a programming puzzle game. 
Admittedly, if you've built a circuit before and if you understand all those concepts, then this game's pretty trivial. But the optimization that's possible in the game is pretty great, too. Um, but I'm seeing my mistake already here. And that is that I don't need to use all these buses and stuff. Rather than moving things to Accumulator and to DAT, I should just print them out immediately um, over the P0 and P1 ports. Um, and then we do our loop. And in the event where we do test for a quality and find that um, it's time to stop sending data, then um, we need to uh, set our colors off. And then it'll automatically jump back to the start of the program. We don't need a start loop up here. However, we do require uh, a loop. So in the case where it's not time to reset, in that case we just need to jump back to the beginning of the loop here. And for purposes of making this more descriptive, let's say just jump back to keep pulsing. Um, so we wait for input, send to input is red, wait for input, send input is blue, wait for input. If the input's zero, send zero is red, zero is blue, um, and then uh, go back to the start of the program. Otherwise, if it is, um, if it's not time to stop pulsing, then continue back up here and wait for another input. Um, now... Yeah, actually, I don't need this conditional at all. I could just have this chip here transmit another data signal once it is time to stop pulsing. And that way I don't need to have a loop here. And I don't need to have a label there. And I don't need to have a test for quality. And I don't need to say that I've done a test. Uh, we just wait for a signal. Could I simplify this any further? Maybe. I think this is good. I think that's as simple as we need there. Alright, so what do we do with our inputs, which are red, green, blue, and intensity? Well, our first... <laughs> okay, so red, we push out on the X2 port over to this chip. Okay, I think the music is a bit intense, actually. Let me turn it down just a touch, or maybe that's just my speakers. I'm not sure if I'm audible above the music. I know I'm fighting with it, but I think part of that's just my speakers being pretty loud. I know the music was incredibly quiet last time, and I think I think I balanced it now. I just had to turn down my speakers. All right, so... Um, Oh, wait, wait, wait. So red, green is going to go uh, over the P1 port. Red, green, blue. And then we need to read in our uh, duration value. Uh, one thing I should have done before all of this was say wait for input. Um, then read in the four values, the last of which becomes a pulse and or a number of pulses, I guess. Um, it doesn't say number of seconds, it doesn't say number of milliseconds or microseconds or anything, but it does say pulse duration. Um, here we will need a loop. Uh, subtract one. Actually, wait. Yeah, okay. And test for less than um, one. Wait. Uh, test if our accumulator is less than one. It's a 
non-blocking Xbus input. I think what that's going to mean is that it's going to keep sending a minus 999 value. If I'm reading that right, that's a minus 999 in each... I don't know. We'll find out what we get when we get it. Um, so, if we are less than one, do stuff. I'm sorry, if we're... Uh, if our accumulator is greater than zero, just keep waiting. And when we're done... Um, at that time, then move 0 to x2. Wait. No, 0 is not a register, so it's saying move uh, just a 0 value over to x2. I'm sorry, that's x3 there. That's our problem. Move 0 to p1, move... Oh, and that's it. That's all we need to move and then go up and wait for another input. So let's take a look at what happens. Okay, so this is kind of stuck in a loop here because it's not sleeping at all. Um, hmm... Not sure what happened there. Wait, 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 wait. We can't sleep immediately. We do need to... Um, yeah, there we go. You have to add a sleep... <coughs> a sleep command somewhere in this. For... Alright, so... Part not sleeping. What's going on here? So we read in... A minus 999 value. So this is a non-blocking Xbus input. Uh, meaning that we're always going to get these minus 999 values in here. Um, okay. How do I deal with that little issue? Also, do I really need such an expensive chip on the right there? We'll fix that later. Um, is this text game Linux? I don't know what you mean. Like, this is a... The protocol that's used for these chips, or the opcodes, rather, is some derivative of VHDL. Um, yeah, I'm not sure how to try to simplify that message. I guess before I, well, yeah, before I get too far, I should try to address, um, this seems to be using overly pricey hardware. I could grab this, um, try to drop it in place what we used to have here, except that doesn't quite fit, so we need something more like that. But then that obviates the need for the bridge. Um, so I'm thinking this is probably what they had in mind to begin with. Uh, except this is not accepting input from x1, it's now x0. So something more like that is probably what they were thinking of. Um, which in turn means up here, um, we're going to reorder some of our outputs. So it's going to be red green and blue. And then our counter. Not that that ends up changing very much. Um, but somewhere on this first chip we will need to test did we get a minus 999. Um, so move x1 to dat. And then we will need to start here. And we will need to test for dat being 
Oh wait, wait, wait. If this is a non-blocking Xbus, does that mean we can connect it to P0? No. This is still an X-type signal, or a simple input. Um, so if we get a minus 999, then we'll need to jump back to start. Otherwise, we'll need to dump that red color out the red port here. I think usually in signal processing, there's a signal that says, I'm about to start sending you a signal. Here there is no such thing. Oh, well, here's, there's no data packet indicating that. Um, so we have to actually read in the data packet and then process it, see if it's a minus 999, and if so, ignore it and wait for another data packet. Um, the code... I mean, we're running the game on Windows. Um, I'm not sure like how this could be Linux. Linux... Uh, I mean, this is a pretty generic language here. It's actually this language that's specified um, by the game itself. So you do need to download the manual, and I've not yet been referring to the manual today. Um, I should actually open it up. Um, I've done enough with these uh, assembly type of... well... Um, this... I forget what you call this kind of grammar or language, but I've done enough with languages similar enough to it that I have not had to contact the reference manual just yet. Um, oh, sorry. Time, seconds, a signal, duty cycle, and frequency. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's our specification here. I should have left this open. That way people who just hopped into the stream could see what I'm trying to do here. Um, my mistake. I just find these big blocks of text less conve uh, convenient for me to read, but it does work quite well for people trying to view this for the first time. Whereas this little graph doesn't tell people much, and we'll be referring to it quite a bit anyway. Um, so we accept the 999 input and uh, jump back to the start, but if it's not a minus 99, then that's the red color. And then our green and our blue go through the second processor and go out to the green and blue ports. Um, and then we take the pulse duration, store it into our uh, accumulator, and then decrement the accumulator. Um, it's funny that we call it an accumulator in that context, but okay. And um, if it's zero, I'm sorry, if it's greater than zero, then we sleep and decrement again and so on and so forth. Otherwise, um, we push uh, publish a zero as the red color and I'm saying this backwards, but publish a zero over this bus and then set the red, green, and blue all to zero. So we'll see if this does what it's supposed to do. Um, parts and part not sleeping. Yeah. So instead of waiting for input, I guess we'll just wait for a fixed duration of one. Uh, SLP one that is. But that also said. Um. We can't just start this by sleeping. We do need to... Um, I wonder... I wonder if the non-sleep at the beginning is going to cause any kind of issue. Let's take a look at how this does. Alright, so we're about to receive our pack. In fact, we have received a zero. The first um, part of our packet. So... Um, huh. Oh, it did... What did this do? 
Okay, so we've received a zero. Or at least a zero is available. Okay, so our DAT register value is zero. It's not a minus 999, so we skip over the branch that says sleep. And then we send a zero over the P1, which doesn't stand out very much because it was zero anyway. Um, and then take our next packet, 50, and ship it over here. And so this is now going to wake up and recognize the 50 value. Um, and there's our 50 lighting up the green light. Uh, meanwhile, this is reading the 100 value in from the left. And here's the 100 value propagating over the circuit. And there we are sending it out. Okay, and then this is going to wait for another input from the left here. So, um, we're going to... 999, is that right? That's quite the duration. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what we're doing with that duration value. Because our accumulator is going to be stuck in that loop for quite some time. And I don't see where that... how we're supposed to send that duration into this. But certainly waiting for 999. Did I read that right? Pulse duration. Oh, if a data packet is received while a pulse is in progress, interrupt the pulse. Okay, so I did read that correctly. It's just I did not um, do any of it. Um, so rather than looping for 999 seconds, we still do need to test um, if we received a value during this. We do still need to jump out. Okay. Which, to me, suggests, um, let's see, suggests I'm going to need to do something a bit different with this data structure here. Um, we can't just loop indefinitely. We do need another condition here somewhere. Um, now, we've run out of lines in which to insert instructions, meaning I could take another chip and try to fit more instructions on the, another chip somehow, but, hmm. I'm wondering if there's a cleaner way to do this with just the chips that I've selected so far. Probably not, but maybe. Um, so during our loop on the bottom, we do need to check um, as to whether or not we've received a new packet. So, how do I do that? There is no pulse command, no. Yeah, so what I need to do um, is find a way to jumble my instructions just a little bit. How do I do this? I'm still thinking the DX300 could have been useful here. Well, no, no, because it only sends a full strength one or zero value. Um, here we do need various intensities of reds, greens, and blues. Um, 
I'm just limited by the 12 instruction count on the left chip, unless I add another chip into this circuit. And adding another chip I don't think is going to make things much simpler, so I'm hesitating to do that. But I do need a plan here. And this is somewhat complicated. Wait. This TX... No, TX is not a simple input. And I don't have any way to get a simple input. Um, nor would it make any sense. The benefit of a simple input is that it's... It's constantly emitting a value, I think. So you don't have to do read-write polling like I'm doing at the top of this program where I'm saying wait for an input. Um, um, what I'm really trying to do on this leftmost chip here is figure out, is there a way... Uh, in fact, why don't we full screen this at this point? Is there any way that I can like combine this loop into this loop up here. Because these both have a sleep command, so I could save an instruction. I could further save a jump instruction, but there would have to be some way that I could loop up there. Um, if we could combine these together, hypothetically speaking, here, let's not preserve this loop, because this loop is confusing anyway. Um, we need a way to be able to uh, have a start and an actual loop. Um, oh, you can actually chain conditionals together. I forgot about that. So we'll have a start um, which is going to reset uh, the various things. Uh, except that's problematic, because then... Hmm. Because we can't send a reset at the beginning of our program. That's a problem. Okay, so... Oh, we can't set a reset here either. How am I going to rewrite what I've got on the right to be able to accept a reset? How would I differentiate between a reset and a... Um, I don't know. Um, I guess I could reorder these here. So, say we're going to start with the reset. I'm making a simplifying assumption here that um, that's probably okay. It's probably a reasonable assumption. So move 0 to P1, move 0 to X2. Except I'd rather do this in the other order, I think. Not that it even matters. Uh, except, I mean X3 here, I mean this guy. Alright, so... So there's our reset, here's our main loop where we wait for a signal but somewhere in here we'll also need to test if my accumulator's gone uh, back to zero um, there's no pulse, there's no repeat, there's no pause let me see if I can get the manual for you um, there's really not very many instructions. It's a very minimal language. Uh, Shenzhen I.O. Manual. 
this is something I should do just in general for this so let's see I'm gonna see if they've officially published a manual <laughs> people on forums say oh it's included in the game but you know it seems like the sort of thing the game publishers probably should have just made available and I see people do link to it on Dropbox and such, but I don't have the rights to actually redistribute the manual. Um, I suppose I could put the manual on screen. Why don't I do that? Um, so let's get our manual. Um, let's see. Which opens up in a browser. And then we can put the browser on the screen. It's like a 52 page manual. So I guess we get to read it together. Um, properties, here we are. Here's our manual. Complete reference card. Um, let's see. So I forget, is there a table of contents in here? Uh, I did skim my way through this, so uh, this is supposed to be as if you've landed in Shenzhen province and are trying to deal with the circumstances of that reality. Um, and so we have uh, documentation for like what's a simple I.O., which is just a continuous signal level, uh, somewhere between 0 and 100. And this is basically just an electronic value. Well, it's a analog value. And then we have data values. Um, and then there's blocking versus non-blocking uh, characteristics. Given that data values are transmitted over data ports, which are blocking, and uh, simple I.O. is not blocking. Um, and so, yeah, you have to have your um, chips sleep, otherwise they will fry. Um, so you do have to put in sleep commands if you want your chips to do constructive things. Um, so yeah, if you want to make a square wave, um, you transmit a 100 sleep, transmit a 0 in sleep, and that produces the 100, 0, 100, 0, 100, 0 sort of thing. Um, and so they have numerous other examples of how you can chain these together and you see here's a simple input, here's a data, and here's a simple I.O. output. Uh, so you can make circuits by chaining things together. Here's the MCXXXX language reference. Um, employs a common programming paradigm to simplify system design and reduce uh, new product development time. That is, the language looks very similar to VHDL, it looks similar to assembly, it looks similar to various other uh, assembly-like languages. Um, it's a very minimal structure and there aren't very many verbs in the language, or there aren't very many opcodes nor are there any, very many registers to deal with, and there's no pipelining instructions either. Um, so there's notation for registers, for constant integer values, for register or integer values, for pin registers, um, um, and you can have labels to um, for your jump commands to return to a label. Um, so our basic instructions, these should look fairly familiar, are no op to do nothing, um, move, which takes a register or an input, uh, I'm sorry, it takes a register or an integer and moves it into a register, jump to label, sleep, oh, well, I am mistaken. Uh, you can sleep for a number of units, but that's not going to work for me here. Actually, you didn't ask about sleep, but I was using a sleep command that waits on an input. But I could also add a sleep 
for a number of uh, time units. However, in my case, my um, specification says I need to do something different. So then there's add, subtract, multiply, negate or not. Um, read a digit out of this and store the result into the accumulator register. So if you had like a number 596 and you say read the zero, the ones digit, this puts a six into the accumulator. If you say read the uh, tens digit, puts the nine in the accumulator and so forth. And then there's the reverse operation for taking a um, value and transmitting it like that. Um, set the value of accumulator at the given position to this constant or to an input value. Um, then there's test for quality, test greater than, test less than, um, test uh, TCP. Compare the value of the first operand to the value of the second operand. That's kind of interesting. I've not had a use for that as far as I know, but um, I see. So if there's a quality, this um, uh, both the plus and the minus case are disabled. Otherwise, if A is greater than B, enable, or if A is less than B, enable. Interesting. TCP. I'll have to remember that one. And that's the specification of the simple um, basic instructions, the arithmetic instructions, test instructions. However, each given uh, chip here may provide its own set of instructions and such that uh, override the bare, uh, basic language. Um, and then there's other parts that don't um, have this language being applied to them. They're just simple analog and data, I.O., uh, simple tables and such, um, saying we're going to read in values and transmit values and such. So that's the basic gist of how this works, and I've not gone over that, so it benefits us to have done that. Uh, it's my fault for not doing that earlier. But... Um, but yeah, it should look familiar to anybody who's done anything ever with assembly. Um, but it is a really minimalistic language. Oops. So, there's not a whole lot you can do with it. Well, no, by chaining all these units together, you can do a lot of creative things. But the focus of the game isn't on finding the most clever use of the language. It's... Um, um, like, if you've played TIS-100, that has a much more sophisticated instruction set. And you can do some insanely complicated things with that particular grammar. This grammar is a lot more limited and a lot more accessible. Um, it does have a little bit of a learning curve, but especially with blocking and non-blocking input. But it's all documented there. Um, yeah does force you to come up with ideas here. So what I was saying is that I'm going to make a loop. And while I could say sleep for the number of seconds according to this input, um, I can't do that sleep and then say, oh, I'm going to interrupt that sleep cycle based on if I've received another input. I don't have a way to do that. Um, um, <laughs> or do I? There's one devious thing I could do here. Oh, but I can't... <laughs> oh, this game has thoughtfully barred me from doing anything creative on the right side of the chip. The creative thing would be if they could just bump this chip a little bit to the left. Um, let's see. Oh, I can't even look under this chip here. But I was going to say... There might be a way to transmit a zero over all three of these ports all at the same time. Um, and if that could be done, um, you could do some clever things to reset this. But I'm guessing during testing, they, somebody came up with that clever solution. 
and the game designers thought that that's much too clever and really defeats the point of the exercise here, which is to figure out how to make a loop that counts for a given number of times but can also be interrupted in the middle of the loop. There might be other ways to do this that don't require that kind of structure, but that's kind of what the developers are pushing you to try to figure out here. If it's doable, or if you need to come up with something hackish that works for this particular exercise but would not be applicable to circuits in general. That all said, so here we have us accepting an input, and if the input um, is a 999, then stuff, stuff, okay, but let me see. There's one other thing I do need to test. Um, basically what I'm wanting to do is keep reading input values. But if one of those input values, um, well, no, yeah, and if, um, but that doesn't preclude me also from counting down. And if we hit a zero, um, then then what? I want to read the input. And we do want to keep looping and selecting input, but also we need to decrement the counter each time. And if our counter hits a zero, we need to jump back up to start instead of jumping to loop. I don't know. This is kind of an open-ended game, and that's part of the beauty of it, too. Um, it, it's really a simulation game, so it could be whatever you want it to be. The game... I don't even know if there's a score counter or a reward or anything. You can certainly observe the metrics uh, that are produced by each successful design. However... Um, all that's required for you to advance to the next puzzle is just to solve this puzzle. But for me, having a background in computer science and having dealt with this very similar sorts of puzzles before, I'm pushing myself very hard to produce something um, very good or very high quality. Um, so I'm being quite unreasonable with my demands here, but by all means, you can just play the game do whatever it takes to solve the puzzles, as hideous as whatever your solution is, is um, just make it work, and then you could come back and try to refine your designs, um, and make them work better or worse. It's very open-ended. Um, so. For input is nine nine minus nine nine nine. Then we jump back to the loop. Maybe this is where I add my other thing where we subtract No. <sighs> so Wait. Um, so 999 means that we've received a bogus packet. Um, I don't know, maybe we do add a subtract instruction here. Um, And maybe um, if our accumulator is exactly... No, this is not going to work. 
um, test if our accumulator is exactly zero, and if so, jump back to start. Which is disgusting, but um, that'll do our reset. Huh. Well, that was polite of it. Um, okay, so... I just really don't like this way I've writ written this at all. Where each loop we decrement the accumulator, assuming that we had a value in the accumulator that made sense in the first place, and that's an invalid assumption. Um, but it's one that, even if invalidated, shouldn't hold up our program from doing a reasonable thing. Namely, under the condition where you start the program, or end up at label start with a value of 1 in the accumulator, this should still work just fine. But I don't like my flow control here at all. Um, or control flow or whatever. I don't uh, like that I'm making an assumption that with every loop I want to decrement uh, the accumulator, irrespective of what values in that accumulator to begin with. I, that just really doesn't seem clean to me at all. Um, but it's functional, but I don't like it. Uh, I mean, I think it's functional. Let's test it out. Yeah, so we broke it. Um, we should have instead emitted a value of 50 instead of 100 here. Um, so it's like we skipped an input altogether. How do we do that? I wonder. So... Oh. Move x1 to dat. If our dat is minus 999, which it isn't. Okay, so then we send 0 to red. Then we ne take our next input, which is 50. Send that over. Um, okay, and then. Wait, how did I mess that up? How did I mess that up? Okay, how did we start this again? So that's our reset. Okay. How did the right... How did this end up where it ended up? I'm, I missed something here. So... Even here I missed something. So it's waiting for a zero. It accepts the zero. Oh! We have not actually moved that zero out. We've not read this zero value yet. Um, my mistake. Okay. That should work better. We have to consume our input. We can't just sleep for there to be a signal. We actually do have to consume the signal. Uh, okay, so that failed again. Um, but probably for a different reason this time. So, we're waiting an input. Okay. okay. So here, there's our 50. Sleep for the value, send the 50 out, good. And then we sleep for value, send the 100 out, that's good. Okay. And then we receive a zero. How did we end up... Oh, because we have a move zero at the start of the program. Okay. Um, yeah, we jumped the gun on that just a little bit. 
So that's me trying to mix my loops and ending up with something that doesn't make any sense. As opposed to something that makes very little sense. Um. Hmm. So, really, um, I could get rid of those instructions, and let's say only the circumstance where um, we've received a packet other than minus 999, should we do any reset at all, like that. Um, now, do I need two separate labels for start versus loop? Probably not. Um, because they're both doing the same thing now. Um, subtract one, test if it was zero, jump back up to start. But start no longer does the reset. I still need a way to be able to reset the circuit. Okay, I know what I messed up. Never mind. So it's not what I was characterizing. The, the problem here was that uh, this is jumping back to the start instead of a, to our loop. Uh, this loop should count off the number of cycles, but also cap be capable of being interrupted by a new signal. Let's see, what happens if we do this now? Okay, so now we're not immediately resetting back to zero. So this might... Okay, so you can see like how close we are to having something that works. Um, mm -hmm. wait, what? Oh, I see. Sending a zero here is incorrect. We're supposed to continue sending a 50. Um, let's see. Yeah, how long is, okay. The fact that it doesn't have this 50 for multiple cycles is kind of disturbing. Let's take a look at what happened. You can set a breakpoint in here and just run to the breakpoint and then step through and see what specifically went wrong. Here we got interrupted. Um, I mean, we should have been interrupted. Oh, right. We've not yet consumed our 100 input. Okay. And then we move our new signal to the data register, see that it is a legit value, and then that's our red value we have to transmit. Um. Hmm. So that's our new red, and then our next input is our 50, and wait, why is my chip on the right doing anything near as complex as what it is doing? Why did I add in a reset thing? Why shouldn't it be the responsibility of the left controller to send the reset values? Um, hmm. Do I even have to have some sort of reset routine? I assume I do, because... Well, anyway... Um... Oh. Oh, I see. What this means is I'll need to wait for there to be an input, move the input into my register, um, test if the accumulator is zero, and if so, then transmit it, and wait for another input. Otherwise, simply transmit it um, as my green value. Okay, that didn't make sense to anybody other than me. But basically means if I get a data packet while I'm still counting for 999 cycles here, and I need to be able to send the new data packet, which is a 50, 
um, I can send that packet and not have to consume... I can expect to consume two inputs instead of three. Usually I'd expect to receive a... this circuit here would expect a zero, and then a green and a blue value. But if you're just sending the green value and the blue value immediately, um, then that's okay. Now you just know that somewhere over here there's going to be a green value of zero and it's going to mess everything up. This is not going to work. Um, oh, also... Um, heart not sleeping, blocked on read. Oops, I meant to say if our... Let's try that. So this is going to fail, <laughs> failed much earlier than I expected it to. Um, wow, maybe I need more expensive hardware on the right, but I don't think that's going to solve it either. <laughs> so there's our 50. Test if it's a zero, and it's not, so just send the 50. Oops. That's a mistake. Um, so if this is a zero, then what? Um, so if this is a zero, then await another input and make that our green value that we transmit. All right. This is looking better. Ish. We have an off by one count problem, but nothing we can't deal with. The simplest way to fix an off by one is to just change the test condition, which is where. Loops subtract one, test of our accumulator is equal to zero. Um, we now want to test is our accumulator less than zero. And that should fix our off by one counting issue. But, okay, yeah, never mind. That was not a great idea. Test if this is equal to negative one. That fixes our counting issue, but introduces another problem altogether, um, which is not good. So basically we're subtracting one one too many times here, right? Okay, so here we are. Um, our accumulator has a value of three in it somehow. I'm not sure how we came by that value of three. Um, but that's the number of times we're going to loop here. Our pulse duration should have been four. Um, but I've already decremented it. And I think I just need to move our sub1 instruction here. So this game doesn't allow you to combine lines, but it does allow you to combine a label and a line of code. Um, whoops, that's not good. That's not where we needed the decrement instruction. Um, test if our counter is zero. If it is, jump back to the start. If it's not, then decrement the counter. That doesn't work either. Okay. <sighs> Nothing's ever easy. I mean, yeah, finding the problem here is fairly easy, that we are cutting off one time unit faster than we need to. Um, but I guess the beginning of our instructions on that chip automatically resets the accumulator back to zero. 
So testing if the accumulator is negative one isn't going to work either. Um. So now what? <laughs> what do I do? If I could take the start part of this program and move it to the end, maybe I could remove the jump loop at the end? No. I'm just trying to find a way. Maybe I could save an instruction. Um... We have an awful lot of jump instructions in this chip. It feels like there should be some way to rearrange the instructions to remove a jump. Given that we have three jump instructions, you'd think that there'd be a way. Um, what else can I do, though? cutting off one cycle faster than we need to be. I just don't know what to do about that. I see it toward the end where we do move x1 to accumulator. That so does set our counter properly. Oh. <laughs> well, I guess I'll have another label here. Um, gosh, we'll have loop and loop two. That's pretty loopy. Okay, so this functions better, but I still don't think it's going to work. I think there is a use ca yep, I thought so. I thought so. I didn't know exactly what the use case was, but thankfully they do define 80, 80 test runs. And because they're so rigorous with their testing, um, you can afford to be pretty lax with your own, and still expect that you'll discover when things go awry. Um, so here we are at a breakpoint, right before the instant that things go wrong. Yeah, this is what I was thinking of earlier. I failed to verbalize it, but a green input of zero is going to trip up what I've written over here. I need some kind of reset signal to my sub-circuit on the right that, um, that's not a zero. It's going to have to be something like a negative value, something that's outside of my input spectrum. Um, to indicate that it's time to reset the circuit. Um, because the idea of uh, accept this input and wait for the next input as the actual green color doesn't quite work out if green is actually zero. Um, So how do I do this? Now let's go back to this lovely view here. So I need to have this loop um, somehow accept an input. Well, no, I need to transmit an input, an output over at X3 here that says it's time to reset. Why not minus 999? Why not? What's the worst that could come of that? Alright, so move this to the accumulator and don't immediately publish it. Here, I'm just gonna start over on the right half of this. This can't be too hard. Um, if it's a minus 999, then move... oh. Let's see. Okay, and then publish uh, the value of the accumulator to P1. Um, and then take our next input over X0 and publish that as P0.
I think this looks reasonable. So our big idea is, well... Hmm... This doesn't deal with the dilemma that, on the left here, this is going to sometimes transmit minus 999, and then more values to follow. And sometimes transmit um, the actual just green and blue values. Um, and I don't know that I can detect which is which until I've started to read. Oh wait, here we go. No need to do special things uh, there, we just move 0 to P1, move 0 to P2. I'm sorry, this P0 and P1 are our two color ports. Um, but if our input's anything other than minus 999, um, then, uh, in that case, take our next two values and make them P1 and P0. I think that should deal with the reset versus um, actual data aspect of this. Shall we test this again? Let's speed up the simulation. Um, but also, oh! Never mind. I broke something. How'd I break it? Part not sleeping. Blocked on read. Oh. Um. Okay. Why am I blocked on read? Oh, I see. We're expecting a value, but not sleeping for it. And likewise, are my blocked on read again? Probably, yeah. So need one more sleep in here. Sleep uh, x zero. There we go. So now the values are just wrong, as opposed to um. Well, okay. So how did I mess this up this time? Maybe we reset like this. This seems to make more sense, and this doesn't require a jump label anymore. So we um, await our first value. If it's a minus 999, then we reset. Otherwise, we just transmit green and blue. So this is an optional reset here in the middle. Okay, let's see what we end up with here. Well, it's something. It's not what we were looking for, but it is a thing. Um, right, so we're discarding uh, 50 here. Now, how are we discarding that? Let's find out. We'll jump to there. Uh, read in our value. Um, so here's a 50 getting sent. Um, oh. Wait, what? How am I going to make this work then? So... My dilemma is that now um, I'm receiving a 50 instead of receiving a minus 999. Minus 999 would mean to reset, but here 50 means we should just emit the 50 immediately and not await another value. 
So how am I going to achieve that? How will I achieve that here? Do I actually need a MC6000 on the right? Do I need, like, more space for instructions? Or is there some way I can, with the same number of instructions, manage to send the 50 out? Um, I wonder. Oh, so just to illustrate the error here, we take the 50, put it in the accumulator, skip over these instructions, and then await another value. And what we need to be doing instead is emit the 50, and don't do this waiting for another value. And don't like the next value is not going to be our green value; it's going to be our blue value. Um. Hmm, that's tricky. Alternatively, I could change the circuit on the left, somehow, to always send um, three values to the... I'm sorry, I could change the processor on the left to always send three values, a zero, a green, and a blue, to the circuit on the right. Um, that doesn't seem correct either. I th hmm. Well, how many ways could I write this program or this routine on the right? Um... And what happens if we send a negative signal over a simple I.O. port or pin? Like, could I send a negative 999 over the green and expect nothing to be emitted? If I could, then that would simplify this um, a bit. Regardless, what I'm doing doesn't make sense, but I just don't see how to rewrite things with the same number of instructions. Um, well, one thing's for sure. If we receive a value that's not minus 999, we can't await another value. Um, might get blocked on read. Um, we'll see if it gets blocked on read. I, th I expect it probably will. Yeah. Blocked on read. So, because th the number of psych steps on the left here doesn't match the number of steps on the right, we are trying to read a value when it's not immediately available. Um, which is no good either. Um, so I can't quite do that. And if I try to grab this instruction and move it up here, then I think we get blocked on a read in some other case. Yeah, in this case. So, 
It's not like I can just get rid of a sleep instruction. The program still does need to sleep at various points. Um, so what else can I try? Line signal to flow to all circuits, then toggle sleep command to cut the flow at appropriate times. Um, hmm. <laughs> yeah, sleep is good for everybody. Yeah, really, if I want to do something more advanced here, I need a more expensive circuit on the right. But I am pushing myself to do things that may or may not make sense. I want this game to be challenging and not something that I immediately, like, beat in one evening. Um, so I'm making this game unnecessarily challenging, just to keep it interesting for me, which is a little bit selfish. Uh, I guess I do have to apologize for that, but um, I just feel like I can do better somehow somehow here. Um, ideally what you'd want is some sort of multiplexed output where you're able to reset all three colors at the same time. Um, there's not a clean way to do that here. The game has made sure that there's no way you can send a reset signal to all three colors at the same time. Um, like, physically, with the buses on the board, you can't do that. Um, they've blocked off the red, green, and blue on the right. Which kind of feels like cheating to me, but whatever. Um, which leaves me with what we have here. Well, obviously it would be uh, a far simpler puzzle if I could just do that. If there were a single uh, red, green, blue reset for this whole circuit, that would simplify things immensely. To the point where it would not even be a puzzle. Um, you could get rid of so many of these instructions on both of these chips. I mean, it'd still be a puzzle, but just not for me. So, yeah, I need to be able to differentiate between two versus three inputs um, feeding into our rightmost processor. So we sleep for an input, move it to the accumulator, test if it's minus 99. If it is, reset both P1 and P0. In any event, end with a uh, wait for green, transmit green, wait for blue, transmit blue. This, the way this is coded is actually having one unnecessary sleep, because these two commands will take the same amount of time as uh, these two commands. So sleep in between the two transmits is unnecessary, and that um, should buy me something. Not sure what, but um, that should be okay. Now, maybe what that buys me is that I can instead move things from the accumulator out to the green port, and then conditionally do the read here. Wait. Uh, Conditionally read on SLX. Uh, if I can do that, that might say that might be what they're looking for here. It's kind of tricky to tell what the puzzle game. Oh, never mind. Yep, yep, yep. So that didn't quite work. Zero P one. Wait. Um, right. Right, right, right. Um, 
I don't suppose I can do that either. Because then I'm going to get the wrong output values. Oh, are we stuck because we're blocked on a read? Never mind. I'm not sure why I thought this would work. Certainly my observation stands here that we don't need the sleep between the two rights as it's written here. Um, this only stuck because I added a breakpoint here, but ultimately this won't work. Oh, really? That did get blocked. Interesting. Um, <laughs> How, what do I do now? Move 0p1, move 0p0. Sleep until we have an input. And transmit green and blue. Certainly worked for our first signal. Did not work at all for our second, where all we got was just a green and then a blue. Um, why did that not work? I'm still thinking that what they're looking for here is move accumulator to P1. I'm thinking that this should block here on, um, I don't know why I'm thinking that should block. I'm thinking this should block on right until this is ready to read the value uh, emitted from X3. And I'm thinking there should be some way to benefit from that, but I'm not sure what it is. Um, move x0 in the accumulator. I thought I just tried this. Okay, part not sleeping, blocked on read. Um, why is that blocked on read? Is this blocked on read? We certainly read a minus nine and nine. Transmit to zero and one, or zero and zero is green and blue. And maybe I have my logic inverted here. Let's try that. Okay, yeah, I just had my logic backward. Okay, beautiful. Here, let's run this faster, because it looks cooler that way. Get rid of breakpoint number two, and just run it. And then it runs all 80 tests, and there we go. Um, and yeah, this is the solution that, like, everybody and their grandma came up with. Um, it's not an elegant solution. It does limit our production cost to 8 yon. Um, but uh, power consumption and lines of code are through the roof. Meaning that, like, many people came up with a more elegant solution using the same hardware but not as constrained on power. Probably what they came up with was switching the order of these two chips, with the larger processor being on the right, if I had to guess. I'm not sure. I'd have to try it out and see what I come up with. Um, probably things are simpler somehow. If I were to delegate the responsibilities differently, Namely, um, so on the left, we would have to move all four values um, 
the red, green, blue... Well, I'm sorry, we'd have to transmit red, green, blue from left to right. And we know that all three of those values come in all at the same time. And then our fourth value we'd have is our accumulator. We'd have to figure out what to do with the accumulator. Um, so we'd count down the accumulator as we're currently doing. And... I'm still struggling with it. This would be simpler um, had I switched the order of these left and right chips. I don't think it would be. I think this is the simpler way to do it. But also, people have found a way with fewer lines of code and much less power consumption to achieve the same end. Which means I've done something that isn't sleeping as much um, as it could benefit from sleeping. And I just don't know. Yeah. I don't see how I could do a routine similar to the one on the left with the architecture of the chip on the right. Um, or rather, I don't see how I could, like, keep this counting... Yeah, I don't know. I'm surprised I came up with such an inelegant solution. Like, we see on the leftmost processor, I have three jump targets, or three jump labels. Um, on the right, we don't have any jumps. We didn't need them. But... Um, there might have been a way to do better code reuse than what I was doing. Um, might also be a way to more optimistically send um, the 0 and 1 over P1 and P0 on the right. Like, I don't know. Maybe after we've received a signal, any signal at all, up here, maybe we just send a 0 to P1 and P0, and then worry about um, I don't know. Should I try that? Why not? Since we're here, yeah, what happens if I want to execute these um, write instructions that reset our colors irrespective of whatever packet comes in? Um, and then we do add a loop up here and read in our input value. And if our input is a minus 999, um, and then just jump back to the beginning. Um, oh, but then we have actually read the value, haven't we? Hmm. Regardless, this shouldn't affect functionality, but might change the power consumption, so let's see what effect it has, if any. Yeah, it doesn't actually affect the power consumption either. It doesn't make anything easier to read. Well, arguably this might be easier to read. I'm not sure. Wait until values available. Reset the colors. Um... For values minus 999, do various stuff. Uh, 
Yeah, I don't know. It's tricky in any event. I am curious what solutions other people came up with. I'll give... I'll have to come back to this at some point. Because I've really missed the boat here somewhere, and I'm not sure where. But we've impressed our colleagues, and that seems to be the point of this game. Um, greetings, all. With every project we take, there are factors we can control and factors we cannot control. We could not control the fact that Cool Dad was arrested and jailed for possession of amphetamines as he attempted to enter Japan, thus canceling the world tour. However, there was something under our control, and that was the terms of the deal. We could have negotiated a better contract that would have allowed us some recourse if something like this happened, instead of leaving us on the hook with a hundred thousand useless color changing light up vapes for us to dump at basement prices just to get rid of them. Yeah, I mean, that's unfortunate. Um, probably should have negotiated for that. That's just how business works. And, um, you know, I think Joe could take a lesson from this that, um, if you've got like a hundred thousand of these things, you could have made a million dollars here had you negotiated just slightly differently in the contract terms. But that's business. Um, and that does matter. Business does help the world go round. But it's not everything. We still get to produce all these beautiful devices. I'm sure some other cool dad will come along along the way at some point. In the meantime, um, yeah, I think it was a somewhat constructive session. Either that puzzle was challenging, or I just wasn't doing as well tonight. In either event, um, it's been a fun session. This game is beautiful. Um, yeah, feel free to... In fact, I hear that they there are puzzles being released on the Steam Workshop beyond the base game. So this shall provide quite a challenge for time to come. Uh, I do want to return to that puzzle and try to optimize it further. I don't want to be boring for you all, though. Even more so than I already am. I know this game is very technical in nature, and I'm not doing a great job trying to make it exciting. But on the other hand, I do really appreciate this game, and I hope you do too. So, uh, thanks for watching. And we'll see you next time.